Next we have Heidi Waterhouse. She works at Launch Darkly, and she's going to tell us a story related to that, maybe, about feature flags. Heidi. Heidi. This one's mine. All right. Feature flags, and specifically how feature flags can go wrong, because if it were easy, everyone would already be playing, right? So I'm here to talk about feature flag flops and how they can go wrong. And mostly, I want to talk about how we can design them so that it goes a little bit less wrong, because I'm kind of into like smaller disasters. So what's a feature flag? It's a way to deploy something out to production without everybody seeing it, and then turn it on at your leisure, because sometimes it turns out that you don't want everybody to see the first thing you deploy. So how's that work? You take a little piece of code, you wrap it in a snippet, and it's like you've given it a cr control surface. If you looked at the soundboard in the back of the room, there'd be all these knobs and twisty things. You could turn it on, off, up, down. It'd be pretty awesome. Feature flags come in two main categories, permanent and temporary. Permanent is for stuff that you want to keep around forever, like uh, pricing tiers. And temporary is for stuff that you just want to make sure rolls out in a predictable and sane way so that you don't have to cry into your coffee. So how do feature flags fail if they're so simple? Well, let me tell you. They've got some real obvious failure modes that I um, have seen happen in all of our production environments at one point or another. For instance, won't turn on. If you have deployed something, you would really like to be able to turn it on for the people that you want to see it, when you want them to see it, predictably. If you don't have your feature flags well designed, that's not always a thing you can count on. Or it might not turn off. We like to call these kill switches, feature flags designed to pull things out of production in a screaming hurry because they killed your server and we're going to take vengeance. Uh, and you really want to make sure that your feature flag is going to turn things off when you tell it to right damn now. So there are some obvious failure modes like having a useless name. I uh, personally name things foobar all the time because I'm not a programmer and nobody corrects me. You could have all of the flags, which means that you have so many flags that you don't know what they are and you're unable to keep track of them. And sometimes you can turn them on by accident. I'm looking at you, LinkedIn. That was embarrassing. And you want to be able to tell who turned something on or off, because sometimes you come home and there's a disaster in the living room and you would like to know who did it. And uh, the answer is nobody. Anybody look at family circus in the last 20 years? Nobody is a, a big actor. Also, you can have feature flags that persist after their usefulness. They crawl out of the depths like zombies, and they reactivate themselves even after you've turned them on or off. It's not really great for your test matrix. So how could we do it better? Four things in one minute, because Ignite Slides are a harsh mistress. So how are we going to do this? First, we're going to create a, oh man, plan. Man with a plan. Uh, you need to know who the feature flag is for, who's going to manage it, when you're going to expire it, and how it's going to eventually live in your database for all time. Because if you don't have that, you're going to build it wrong. You need to have a name that describes what you intend the flag to do, because somebody is going to come along and think, that's not important, and turn it off. So clearly name it right up front. A-B testing? Maybe. Then you need to test it. Always test your tests, which gets really recursive and a little complicated. But if you have turned something on, you want to make sure that it's on. So I advise turning it on for yourself first before you turn it on for everybody else. And then set a time bomb on your feature flags to delete them right away when you're done with them. Otherwise, they just hang around being a threat surface all the time. And nobody likes that because the zombie thing. Kill switch your darlings. The thing that you are most excited about deploying is the thing likeliest to go wrong. I'm sure you've, none of you have ex ever experienced that. But you want to be able to turn something off if it happens. And finally, you want to be able to test in production. We work in a multi-distributed, interleaved, super complicated, exciting world of SaaS 
and interoperability, and we cannot test in test. It's not a thing. So we need to be able to test in production. We need to be able to deploy to production with full scale, with full volume, with full everything, and never show it to anybody but ourselves. That's what test in production means. In conclusion, LaunchDarkly just got our Series B today. We're super excited, and we are so hiring. So thank you all for your attention.